This is the second part of the lecture on CAD and topology optimization laboratory demonstration. We discussed about the CAD design, very trivial design using SOLIDWORKS software in the previous lecture. We developed arms, I have just made further steps on those arms, three arms in the three different directions at three different angles, less than 45 degree, exactly 45 degree and more than 45 degree. Also, I have made flanges over the ends of those arms. Those I will try to demonstrate using the NC software for topology optimization. Before that, let us have a look over the different simulation softwares which are available. For example, COMSOL Multiphysics. COMSOL and NCs are two major software which are used. COMSOL definitely use MATLAB as its base. So, if we suppose we need to use very general physics models and save time in general because computational console takes time. So, NCs is recommended and if we have uh, the best access to physics and if we understand the MATLAB the coding in great detail, COMSOL can also be used. So, NCs is generally used for volumetric simulations, COMSOL can also do volumetric simulations with some uh, different or separate methodologies, but it is further extension to go deep to design to have deep research on the components as well. Now, COMSOL provides the finite element analysis that is multiphysics and solver simulations of the partial differential equations in general. And these are physics based interfaces which provide the mechanical, electrical, fluid, chemical applications. Similarly, MATLAB uses MathWorks and it was created basically for MathWorks and using the MathWorks and numerical computing only and small programming language, it has a toolbox to provide simulations and modeling capacities. Then we have ANSYS, ANSYS is a basically mechanical finite element analysis software and it is used for computer models as I just said the volumetric models for different structures, for electronics, machine components, for analyzing different uh, parameters for example, strength, toughness, elasticity, temperature distribution in computational fluid dynamics definitely fluid flow, electromagnetism. So, all different features could be seen here in NCS. Next comes Fusion 360 as I told in the previous lecture as well. Here also small simulations which can be used for machining, manufacturing, small industrial designs that could also be conducted. Then to create tool paths for computer in manufacturing CAM, CAM this is also used. Then we have Inventor. So, Inventor Autodesk since has expanded from their base home. So, this provides another software support Inventor which helps in simulation, animation, then uh, photorealistic rendering as well these are all taken care in Inventor. Then we have SOLIDWORKS simulation as well in which again finite element analysis to predict the real world behavior of a product that is virtual design. So, it also provides the portfolios in linear, non-linear, static, dynamic different kinds of analysis that could be used. So, now I will come to the NC software, I will try to import the file that was generated using the CAD in SOLIDWORKS and try to have a small demonstration here. So, now the CAD model was since ready. So, we are opening now the NC software to understand the capacity of the model that is generated there. So, we can do small static analysis. So, I am just typing here workbench, workbench 2021 R1 is the ANSYS software that would be used. So, different modules, selection of materials. So, for designing as well as uh, different simulation processes that we can do in this software. So, this is a software interface, you have the workplace area here, you have the left window pane. So, this is project schematic, we have messages down there, some messages they 
keep on giving regarding the information on the steps that we conduct here. Okay. Now, it has opened. So, this is the main interface in which we can have left pane here and the workspace here. So, in the left pane you can see the analysis systems that is the coupled field. So, random vibrations, metal acoustics, different kinds of models could be built here. So, CFT could be used. So, fluent with the meshing. So, we can use the geometry here, the component systems, then IGM, CFT systems, the static structural could also be used for static analysis, then explicit dynamics could also be used for the nonlinear dynamics if we suppose have something here like that. Then transient thermal analysis could also be taken. So, turbo machinery, fluid flow in, uh, in, the, in the fluid dynamics. So, different kinds of the models could be used depending upon our requirement and our learning in that software, learning on using that module, giving the right input is most important here. So, we will now have a tree for the simulation that we are going to conduct. So, this is the tree. In this tree, we have static structure, we have different uh, options available like the engineering data. So, we can specify the material, linear, non-linear, inputs, geometry. So, geometries which are made in Jordan works that can be induced into this interface. So, it shows that it is a no data is specified or we need to add it still in the model, then we can add an edit model, we can add new geometry, we can import geometry from the context menu. So, then in setup solutions and results could also be taken from here. First, we come to the engineering data to add the material here. So, to in our library here, we can have different properties, physical properties, linear elastic, hyper elastic, then plasticity, creep, life, different kinds of the toolboxes are here from which we can put the features, the parameters that we are going to use or that we are going to fix as a range or as a fixed or constant. So, in engineering data sources, so NCS granta materials data is already been defined here. So, some materials in additive manufacturing would be here, some might not be here because materials are under development or so. So, we can add more materials and add new, uh, new materials or new database here. So, this is also an option available. So, general materials and NC granta materials both could be used. The geomechanical materials, composite materials, general non mineral materials, explicit materials, thermal, few different kinds of materials could be used. So, if I select the general materials, it will now show the list of the materials which are general. So, al aluminum, uh, concrete, copper, stainless steel, grey cast iron, then magnesium alloys. So, many materials are here and even polymer, polymer materials like, like uh, the, uh, the polyethylene, those are also here. So, to extend it further, so as I also see the detail, so silicon anisotropic, stainless steel, structural steel. So, if we select here, it will show that it is added. So, this is a plus sign here. So, in the general material, so NCIS, NCIS granta material, it is showing the materials which are available in the NCIS base. So, structural steel, if I select structural steel, you can see the density, the properties of that material. Then, then coefficient of thermal expansion, then Young's modulus, Pearson's ratio, bulk modulus, all those values are, uh, can be seen here then tensile yield strength. 
So, okay, for non-linear, it, it will be a tabular form. For the linear one, it is already a constant value is put here at the right top here. So, for a tabular data, it will be a range that is for non-linear. So, this can be taken for or put from the library. So, we can also add some material from here. So, if we wish to add, I will just click plus here and this material will be added. So, this is added to the directory. So, from this library, it will show that the book icon is here. So that means, it is added to our engineering data. We can also insert copper. We can select additive manufacturing materials. So, so we are using 17.4 H stainless steel, which I have added. Then stainless steel general. So, these two materials stainless steel I selected. So, these are the properties of stainless steel. So, coercion to thermal expansion. So, everything is given here. So, this is also table given uh, the comparison of the temperature and density at different temperatures, how does the densities behave. So, this is table given for the temperature and uh, strengths that is the modulus, tangent modulus and the yield strength. Now, this is temperature versus young modulus, position ratio, young modulus, bulk modulus, shear modulus. So, this material is selected as stainless steel. Now, we need to select the uh, or import the data here that is the geometry. So, the CAD that is developed there, so that could be transferred here or imported here. So, then we will have the static structure analysis over it. It is still opening, it takes time in loading. So, let me quickly come to the point when it is loaded. So, this is the page for the NCS analysis workspace. So, we have similarly to the CAD, we have the tabs and the ribbons here in the in the clipboard orient, then sketch ribbons here, we can design display, display tab, you can see the style ribbon. In the assembly, we have assemble, edit, part, is file or standard part, then we can measure it, then you can see the facets of it. So, let me try to import the file from the saved folder here. It is kept in the desktop. So, okay, all files, then metal sample part, step format that is imported here. So, after importing the design, you can see this is the design which I modified from the one that I just showed you in the demonstration in the previous lecture, just to add a few flanges and to just make the uh, angle that is 90 degree angle uh, as also square. So, if we need to amend and enter, so we can have different views here. So, we exit after importing and we say ok. Then we again come to the model here. The model option to give the boundary conditions, we need to specify what boundary conditions or based upon what different restrictions our model is going to be developed. So, after opening this is this was the model model page which is now opened. So, in the project model page we can see system and we can also see the materials that we have added from the library 316 stainless steel and 174 H stainless steel. So, we will select 17.4 stainless steel 
So, you can see the properties here that could also be again seen. It is showing also the graph of the uh, different modulus, different mechanical properties. So, we can select for material assignment 17 foot pH stainless steel. So, based upon this material, we will try to see how does the stress concentration flows. So, now we can come to mesh. I am now generate a mesh over it. So, I will just click mesh here. To have a structural analysis, this is one of the uh, most important steps to create mesh. So, mesh type could be taken from method, from sizing. So, we can control the size related settings such as element size, number of uh, divisions along an edge, or use of uh, different shapes such as sphere or body of influence. So, that means the sizing of the mesh has to be in such a way that it cannot be so dense, it cannot be so less. So, a very dense mesh would take much time, very less would not give us the correct results. Then face meshing is there, it, that enables the generation of the meshing at the face itself. So, we will just provide the method that is slicing. I will select the geometry here. So, the main criteria that is being uh, taken here is that the joints uh, of uh, these arms has to be strong. So, from here and the adjoining surface of the arm is body, not only surface the complete solid body, if we select the all surfaces it will show the complete body. So, angle less than 45 that is 0 degree actually, then angle more than 45 and equal to 45 all the joints there down and the surfaces, surfaces mean it will select the whole body, this is being selected. Okay, why not select the flanges as well? So, this whole extruded portion would be not tested, because if extra, extra material the case if extra material is there on the flanges at well, that would also be moved. So, we cannot define the element size here, in which does give which we can give the size of the element here it is given as 2 mm. So, now So, in the meshing we can providing uh, uh, the sizing, contact sizing. So, contact sizing means we can create elements uh, that similar to the faces or face to face or face to edge kind of contact region. So, like cylinder piston assembly or cam follower assembly the contact sizing is there. So, we can further refine or specify the maximum number of times we want the initial mesh to be re refined. So, different options could be taken to keep it very simple and understand the meshing process. So, I will just provide a method and apply, I will select the whole geometry and selection of the method would be, we can say uh, the element, what kind of elements do I need. So, it would be tetrahedral, hexagonal, so what Cartesian, what kind of systems, what kind of the element order do we need to do. So, we will select the tetrahedrons here and I will start the meshing and generate a mesh. So, 
So, you can see the meshing here. So, other than the center part is less dense and uh, other arms are little more dense. So, we can also uh, select the resolution. Resolution can be increased or decreased to provide specific mesh density at specific points that we need to be more calculative. So, after the meshing is completed, we can see the number of nodes and uh, number of elements which are generated. So, it is showing around 20, 25,000 nodes and around 15,000 elements are generated in this mesh. So, we can also update after changing the resolution. So, because the resolution is now increased, so mesh would become denser. So, you can see the mesh has become much denser than we had the previous. So, now in static structure, we will try to uh, insert the criteria. So, we can saw ex with acceleration, gravity, rotation, and pressure, hydraulic pressure, uh, the thermal analysis, frictional support, then movement line pressure. What kind of criteria are we going to pick here? So, one of the criterion that could be selected to see whether how the material would behave and how the stress concentration would flow if we try to provide a load over it. Initially, we will say the fixed support. So, if I fix this support, okay, this part is not fixed. For example, let me say this part is fixed to a body or the ground. So, we are going to select the geometries now from where we wish to uh, put a force. Then we are going to apply, we are going to put forces in these three faces on these surfaces of the flanges. We are going to apply the forces on the surfaces of these flanges and uh, we can select the coordinate system. In global coordinate system, we have uh, different, uh, you can see x component, y component, z component. So, since we have to provide it uh, uh, the force in the z direction, a negative force has to be applied. The direction of the load has to come downwards. So, I will put minus here minus 500 Newton of the load is applied here. So, whenever these loads are selected, that is again the basic engineering, we always see the factor of safety, the use of the component. So, that is all the skill of the operator again, as we discussed in reverse engineering as well. So, the physics or the engineering fundamentals has to be very clear. Now, you can see here in the mesh, the features, number of steps 1, these as end time and start time for this so program controller. The solver type is again program control direct or iterative. So, we can select iterative or program control solver type. So, large deflection, inertia relief, these are all kept off. So, for the uh, non-linear controls as well, we have set the program control. That is, whatever data we put, just take it accordingly. It, it will not assume many things here. So, it is, it is taking the values take given in the program. So, then we select solution. What kind of solutions that, what do we need to check here? It could be deformation, stress, then total deformation, energy, strain. So, we can say total deformation, we can say equivalent uh, stress, then equilateral elastic strain is taken, the total deformation is to be seen and uh, equivalent stress is selected. Deformation, strain, stress. 
we could also have picked uh, maximum principle, the uh, middle principle, minimum minimum principle, maximum shear, different kinds of strain could have been selected. Now, in the stress itself also equivalent stress is selected, but we could again have selected the intensity, normal shear, the membrane stress. So, similarly different other solution responses that we need to test that could have been selected here. So, if we need the solution, now the solver uh, required status is solver required and we try to solve the problem here. So, it will take its time. So, as you can see in the left status bar here, it is showing that. So, now it has started, it we can see here the simulation is 10 percent run, it is solving the mathematical model here 12 percent, 13 percent. So, it will take its time since it is now 15 percent and the simulation this best solution that we have seen that there is a body that is fixed and the load is applied from the top and I just fast forward it to see how the stress concentration flows and all the rates flow this. So, this is now fast forwarded. So, we have got the solution information for the total information you can see the animation of the total uh, deformation here. It is showing how the load is applied on the body and how the stress concentration is flowing that is a stat static structural flow. So, this is and then uh, total deformation was shown then we have the equivalent elastic strain that is being shown here. So, as you can see at the fixed part the uh, strain is maximum. So, this can these are all cantilevers the point of uh, the uh, fixed point of the cantilever that is receiving the maximum stress. So, ok let me try to make it less dense the contours could be made smooth here, the colors could be made smooth. So, it is showing that around uh, 400 mega Pascal of the uh, uh, of the stress is there. So, also the report is generated in the text form where we can see the outputs here. You can see this uh, uh, temperature values, the real strength, the tangential modulus for a different nodes it is given. and 200, 425 these all values are given here. So, I trust on the different nodes and elements that is given here. So, these are solution options static steady state solution is given to 73 the distributed domain decomposer, the solution setting for the boundary condition is given. Also, we will get uh, the matrix for precise mass summary. total number of iterations that is here are 620, total number of equations which are taken are around 1.4 lakh. It is time it is telling that is total time it has taken is uh, 27 seconds and force convergence values are also given displacement convergence values. So, this detailed or the I would say comprehensive data is not generally required. Majorly we require the value of the minimum and the maximum stress concentration that is the uh, what we call it uh, the elastic strain value or equivalent stress at or where does the component fail. So, this is the result of the simulation analysis that we can see here. So, also we can export 
this file uh, in the STL format to to get the 3D printing or for topology optimization. So, we can put the same product in for topology optimization. So, we will connect this solution that is the static structure to the topology optimization. So, we have selected topology optimization from the left pane and we will just connect this solution to this setup. You can see these two packages are now connected. So, all engineering data, geometry, model, setup, solution, results are now connected to the topology optimization. Small pop up window here. So, let us see the setup. Right. So, this is the model or the base that we are going to use and we are going to optimize the topology. So, after starting the topology optimization, once we open this window or this workspace for topology optimization. So, the target is mechanical APDL, APDL is ANSYS parametric design language. The optimality criteria is being selected here number of iterations, uh, it is doing 500, we can say okay, only 100 iterations are required, but this is just for demonstration only. Then optimization region can be put here, there is a three, again these three arms could be selected. So, the whole body could be picked for optimization. For the boundary conditions, we can uh, select uh, all loads or all boundary conditions. Then the topology optimization it is asking uh, using mass density, then lattice optimization, then space optimization, then level set based optimization. We will just say density based. So, unwanted are the extra material where the stress was almost 0 or there is no stress, no strain being uh, applied to that material that part of the body, it will just show that material could be removed from here. For the current design, so let us try to conduct it. So, we can say solve. Okay. So, now again it will take time, you can again see the status bar down here, it is taking time. So, I will just fast forward it to see the solution of the topology optimization. Let us see the topological density here. So, this is how it shows that a material could be there or the component could be there. So, wherever the material is not required, it has removed the material from that part. So, that was the base model and uh, the, the, this one is the, the optimized based upon the density. So, it has reduced around 50 percent of the material. So, it means that wherever the stress or the strain is more, the material is more or the thickness of the material is high. Wherever the stress is lesser, the material is either taken off or it is lesser. So, to put this component in additive manufacturing, it would be very tough to have these abstract or these uh, I would say almost organic features to be developed. So, that is uh, one of the reasons that we have to layer little clean the surfaces or the volume as well. So, we can just export this file in the data first for 3D printing that is an STL file. So, this is now the STL file that is that we can bring here to smoothen the surfaces. Once STL file is saved, so we can then bring that, we 
open it and bring it to the ensis face here. So, now we can optimize, we can just smoothen these surfaces. So, one of the ways to manually uh, smoothen them is to have or to put the manual sketches over it. So, we can just take the surface, okay. this is surface, wherever the surface connects, this is again similar to the reverse engineering, we can select these straight lines and try to make or connect. So, I am just doing it very quickly. So, we can spend more time to cover the curves here, we can provide small round surfaces as well, we can provide small arcs as well, but it depends upon the machine capability as well. For instance, the machine my resolution or the minimum component or the feature size that could be developed in my printer, if that is 15 micron and if I provide a radius here lesser than that, that would not be able to be produced here in additive manufacturing. So, based upon the machine capability as well, sometimes this has to be manually changed and uh, in the similar way, now we have just generated a 2D surface jet on this plane, the intersection plane. So, similarly a 2D surface from the bottom line a rectangle is generated. So, let us now try to pull it ok, the main body this is to the surface, this will be pulled out ok, this is now pulled out, this also is pulled out to match with the optimized material structure. right? So, because it was starting from the center, it, has, it could be pulled from the both the sides. So, this is only the, the steps that we are showing here. So, multiple steps or it will take time to overall fit the surface to the structural body that we have got. So, we have done that and uh, we have come up to this level. So, this is optimized 3D printable system that we have got from here, 3D printable component. So, this has majorly rectilinear surfaces. So, we can make it more smooth while spending some more time because we are doing it all manually. this we can also show the facets. So, we can view or unview the things or the bodies which are here in the system. So, this is the solid body, how close it is to the structural body and how different is from the basic model that was generated that is being shown here. So, we can now save the file for final 3D printing. So, that is obviously a the STL format. We will name the component as STL of refurbished CAD model. STL of refurbished optimized design will give some name here, file name STL of refurbished optimized design and this model is ready now for 3D printing. So, this is how we have the topology optimization conducted on a very simple kind of a structure. We developed the CAD model, we try to develop the mesh using NC software, we try to add the static deformation model out of it. Then we transfer that model for topology optimization, try to have the material only wherever is required, smoothen that. This was very broad presentation. 
NC softwares and console softwares need the understanding of engineering fundamentals to a great extent. Then using the software, as I said before as well, these are always GIGO, garbage in, garbage out. I fast forwarded many steps because it takes time for the simulations to happen, for the optimization to happen. With this, the demonstration on the CAD and laboratory demonstration for metal additive manufacturing is completed. Definitely, you can come up with the questions in the forum. If you have need any more scientific input or you need any more details, we would be happy. We will try our best to cater to all of them. Thank you.